Hello, it's Mazzy. Welcome back. I want to show five brand new records, relatively new records that I've acquired. All these I paid for, and only one I'm going to place a link, a Bandcamp link, because I want you to go buy it, because there are only 200 copies pressed. Happens to be a friend of mine, Louis Golden, and the record is Sharon is Karen, Heart of the World. And I'll tell you about the music in a second, but uh, I urge you to support independent artists. And I get tired when I hear people continually saying, older people, you old farts there, that there's no great new music out. There's a lot of great new music by new artists, old artists alike. You have to search it out. You have to ask your friends. You have to listen to others uh, like myself and others. You're not going to like everything I show you all the time, but that, but at least you can go check it out. It might be, uh, um, it, you know my taste by now, unless you're new here. Uh, but this is a little different for me. Well, not really, actually. This is a a punk power pop album. At least that's how I see it. I'm not sure how Louis uh, describes it, but I think he would agree. Um, it's got the um, driving thick guitars of a Green Day, but it doesn't sound like Green Day. It's got the hooks of power pop uh, from, you know, the late 70s into the early 80s. It's got this... Uh, wonderfully pressed, colored, orange, tangerine-like vinyl, pressed its furnace, the pressing plant uh, in Austin, Texas. Uh, I think a self-designed cover, but the link below is to uh, that link, because I think he only pressed 200 copies. Hand numbered, I am number 23. He asked me what number I want when I purchased it, and 23 is my lucky number, and luckily uh, it hadn't been taken yet. Uh, but only 200 copies, and I know it's it's selling fairly quickly. Now, there's a great hook to all these songs, um, and they're very, very catchy out of the gate. Uh, so if, you, again, everything is kind of upbeat, they're not mellow ballad-type things on this album. It's all driven, and it's got this kind of great thick guitar rhythm, these sound. They're not lead guitar licks going throughout. It's not a big monster rock anthem like a record but it's just great hooks think the Mar the ramones do with uh, with maybe more catchy vocals on it um there is one track that he does a great duet it's uh, side b rule number nine is the track uh that he works with joey Callio from the band dada and now seven horse uh if you've watched my channel we did a couple collaborations here he lives in seattle and he's got that great kind of wonderful vocal, and they do a great harmony on that track. So they do a dual harmony on that track. He's got other artists working on guitars here, uh, vocals, uh, a couple background vocals as well on here. But there's some just great hooks on this. And and I'm not hyping this just because uh, he's a friend of mine. I actually like these kind of power pop things with little more edge. Now, I'm a fan going back uh, to the Berkeley scene, uh, the Rubinus, who are that power pop. They did, you know, covers of I Think You're Alone Now, the Tommy Janes. They don't have that kind of hard edge like uh, like Sharon is Karen has. Uh, but, you know, there's certain DNA. I don't know if Louis ever listened to the Rubinus or those type of things. I keep thinking of that commercial side of uh, punk and the commercial side of power pop, which is pretty much all commercial, but very accessible and really a great album to blast, turn up. And it's well produced. Uh, he self-produced it, obviously. These are digital recordings. He worked uh, in a studio and and um, collaborated with these other artists. But I highly recommend this. You can check it out on Apple Music and at Bandcamp and see if it's your taste. But um, again, I recommend it. Click the link below. Support artists directly at Bandcamp. It's the only place you can get it. And once they're gone, I don't know. I think he's already working on a second album. But um, I love Louie. Louie, I met him in Austin last year at the Austin uh, show. If you watch our tour of the Austin show, he's definitely in there somewhere. Okay. Now let's go to Nashville, Tennessee. Now these are the artists that probably many of you have heard of. Uh, this is Wetland Studios, the title of the artist, and this is a, a wonderfully, beautifully recorded record 
all analog record by Gillian Welch and uh, David Rawlings. Uh, this wonderful team. I've been a fan of, of Gillian Welch since I bought her CDs. And then, of course, uh, they bought this studio and uh, fixed it up and updated it. It's been around for years in Austin. I think the roof literally was torn off during one of the hurricanes a couple years ago, and they repaired it. And um, they do the all analog thing, a beautiful pressing thing. And this is acoustic new country Americana at its finest. Uh, a beautiful songwriting by the two of them. Obviously, the guitar playing, especially by David Rawlings, is beautiful. All the records so far that they've finally put out on vinyl from the CD era, um, analog recorded records, mind you, for the most part, I think, uh, are beautiful. And their cover package is, is really stunningly done. Um, this is what the music's about. Seeing that photograph, you can really tell how intimate this is. Just two sitting across from each other, doing some harmony vocals, doing acoustic uh, guitar situations. Uh, this is just a beautiful, simple black vinyl, and this is their own label, Acone Records. There you go with that. And it's got a separate uh, inner sleeve with the lyrics, so they give you the second one instead of just doing one polyline sleeve. They give you the other sleeve, uh, like the old days when records come in. You know, we never complained about poly sleeves and paper sleeves back in the day. But now everyone, like, creams in their jeans and freaks out when, <laughs> when they put it in a rough paper sleeve. Okay. Again, just beautiful, beautiful folk, country folk music. Really, really well done and uh, highly recommend it as well. And I ordered it directly uh, from them. So again, uh, they're an independent artist, not as independent as Louie, but um, you know, they're more known and they do uh, their tour out quite a bit. Now this is an interesting record. This is the second album from Lady Blackbird, Slang Spirituals. And before I heard this record, well, let me go back. A couple years ago, three, four years ago now, maybe during the pandemic, early in the pandemic, a viewer sent me her debut record, and it, it sat here for a little bit, then I finally put it on, and I was gobsmacked. It was one of the most beautiful things I'd heard in a long time. Kind of a neo-soul jazz, a very, like, cocktail jazzy, but so friggin' soulful. A little bit like a um, Anita Simone uh, occasionally, and just very intimate, and just soulful as hell, and jazzy as hell, soul jazz and uh, very personal, very sexy. I went to see her at the Triple Door uh, with my friend Coffee Julie maybe a year and a half ago or so, two years ago, and she was stunningly live in person with one, was it a, now I forget if it was a guitar player on a stool or, or a piano, I think it was a piano player, but really beautiful, intimate. What a great performer. And she's not a young kid, but she just has this way of, and the audience just loves her and she just, it's a very sexy performance. Now, before I got this, I mentioned it or I bought it and I hadn't heard it yet. And my friend John out in Birmingham, who's a big soul fan, six inch piano player, uh, his channel, big soul, R&B, reggae dub, mentioned he wasn't quite sure about this, more overproduced, more production. So I was prepared for what I was about to hear. This is a totally different sound than her first album. Now, was I disappointed? I probably would have been if I hadn't heard from John telling me uh, his opinion on it. Now, I don't know if he likes it anymore since his first thing. So I was prepared, and I really like this, but it's a whole different experience. Now, it opens up the first few tracks. There's literally this huge, massive um, choir, like basically a gospel choir, and it's a very kind of 70s sound with these gospel singings. Think if Melanie, who did... Brand new roller skates did that song candles and the whatever, you know, hey, hey, with all the, the choir behind the soulful uh, African American choir, uh, gospel choir behind her. It's kind of like that. Really big production in a way. So it's very, very different. The first few tracks are like that. Then there's a couple tracks on here that are more intimate, more acoustic based, very much like a, a um, a Tracy Chapman or Joan Armitrading. So you got to mix. It's not as consistent as the first album that has a vibe. 
This has a vibe in a different direction. So they got the, the big production and they kind of scale back uh, with the, um, you know, the folksy, soulful stuff, if that makes any sense. Beautiful cover art. I love this cover art. Uh, this one, I believe, is a um, clear vinyl. I'm not always a happy uh, camper with clear vinyl. Uh, there are a few noises, but I, some of those ticks have dissipated uh, since I first played, and I played this about four times now because I really want to get a feel um, to what I think about it. But there's a lot of stuff going on on this album, so uh, check it out, but I think it's really good. It's just not um, what the first album was. It's a whole departure from the first album, so uh, that may be a good thing for some people. The other one might be too jazzy, uh, too kind of soft and sexy. Uh, that one you'll probably get laid more before this one uh, gives you that uh, sexual desire with your partner <laughs> or with a neighbor or whoever. So uh, Lady Blackbird, what's it called again? Uh, slang Spirituals. It's definitely a, a gospel spiritual based album and I'm a huge fan of gospel music. Then we got an album that I think is one of the best albums of the year. Well, a lot of these, well, it's going to be, a, this is a good year for music. That's what I'm saying. People say there's no great music out. They're full of shit, basically. Uh, this is the third album from The Smile called Cutouts, and the second album they put out this year. I had no idea this was coming. When I kind of saw this, uh, I actually saw it in the store, and I didn't pick it up thinking it was a remix or something, because I thought, you just put an album out earlier this year. Now, of course... Uh, this album is Tom York and Johnny Greenwood uh, from Radiohead and Tom Skinner, the great uh, jazzy drummer from uh, Son of Kemet, Kemet? Kesmet, uh, who were no longer, I think they broke up about two years ago. But this is a beautiful record. And what's nice about it, I I'm a Radiohead fan and I am a Smile fan and I like Tom York's very electronic solo records, but I also like Johnny Greenwood's soundtracks and his minimalist. And he scores and does these great things with cello. He did the Phantom Thread uh, for Paul Thomas Anderson movie. He did There Will Be Blood, There Might Be Blood. There Is Blood, you know, the, the Dan Day-Lewis movie. Uh, beautiful movie, great, oh, friggin' great soundtrack, neoclassical. He's got this amazing way of orchestrating strings and he's a great guitar player, great multi-instrument player. What's great about this album over the first two Smile albums, I think it's their best. I like those. Those are more in the electric kind of, uh, you know, universe coming from the later Radiohead, coming from uh, the later Tom York records. This has space. And I'm not talking about dynamics in recording, but being a trio, they, they're, they're not piling things on like a Radiohead would. Although I love Radiohead. Kid A is my favorite Radiohead album. Even though I like the guitar bass stuff earlier, I think the electric stuff, Kid A is one of the best albums of the last hundred years. But this has some great, great music to it. You're always going to get the Radiohead feel because of Tom York's vocal. He's so distinctive. That's that kind of ethereal thing. It's like another instrument uh, when you think about it. The syncopa syncopation of... Um, the drumming here of uh, Tom Skinner with the guitar playing of, uh, when he does play guitar, Johnny uh, Greenwood, are it's just so intricate. And it's got a little bit of a jazzy feel, but very minimalist jazzy. Second song on here is one of my favorite that almost like surprised me when I heard it, because it could be early Radiohead, or it could be something George Harrison would have written around the time of Within You, Without You. It's called Instant Psalm. It's a spiritual type thing, but acoustic guitar. I love that Johnny Greenwood brings back the acoustic guitar. I assume it's him. It could be Tom York on here. There's some acoustic guitar on maybe two or three tracks. Uh, the last track, too, Bodies Laughing, has that acoustic guitar bass to it. And I just love that. So that's why this album breathes more than probably the first two uh the Smile album, that's the name of the band. So, you know, I think they've become, they're not, they're no longer a Radiohead side project from my, uh, from my point of view. And it's got, a, again, Don Wood's, uh, is that his name, Don Wood? His name is, um, yeah, Stanley Don Wood, 
who does these paintings and works with uh, Tom York to do all the covers of these albums, his own album, the other Smile albums, the Radiohead album, beautiful artists. And I think this might be my favorite. I mean, it really popped with this color here. Here's the insert or the in, uh, inner sleeve, the, excuse me, the gatefold. I know it's something like that. Again, beautiful artwork. I think he is an amazing uh, artist. I've always loved certain artists that continually work with one band or artist. You know, Neon Parks with Little Feet. Um, I just lost it. There's so many bands that like an artist will follow along and create f photography or illustration or design work with a band and kind of grow with them in different, you know, aside from self artists like Joni Mitchell who does a lot of her own artwork her paintings beautifully too but uh, the smile and this is cutouts I keep thinking you know the one thing when I first saw this when I saw cutouts I kept thinking of cutout records in the 70s where they clip them or punch them basically they're discounted sent back uh, from the label to sell them cheaper so I thought this might be some kind of remix album but it's not it is a beautiful record and finally the record you've been waiting for for 16 years this is, what is in the name of this? Long of a Lost World. Songs of a Lost World. You can't even see this, but when they have this tight treatment that their space is within one word, it's hard to kind of read it here. Uh, same here. It's so kind of small, but it's Songs of a Lost World by The Cure. Now, my Cure history goes back to spring i believe of 1981 and i think there it was their third album was that faith that had just come out and the opening track they opened up i saw them at the i-beam i-beam was on hate street kind of a block up to where amoeba is now that used to be a bowling alley the park bowl and it became rock and bowl and upstairs on hate street was a club it was a gay disco dance club that eventually morphed a little bit, shared the space, and two or three nights a week would have these new wave and bands. And I saw Billy Bragg there, Violent Femmes there. First time I ever saw them. Opening up with a slow dirge that built up for 10 or 15 minutes until the vocals came in. Now, this is a really good record, a return. Now, this isn't going to be like the singles. If you're only into the Cure singles, the greatest hits records. This ain't that. This is more the dark, dirgy side, the slow core kind of feel of their music. But I tell you, um, the vocals on this, Robert Smith's vocals sound like his records of 30, 40 years ago. Uh, I think this is their 17th album. I don't, I'm not quite sure. 15th? I don't know. Does it matter? It's a, it's a really good record, but it's a dark, dirgy slow album with some long cuts that go into a little kind of that uh gothy psychedelic thing occasionally but it's a brilliant album and uh, again his voice is great the recording is really good i see that i think it was cut by miles shotwell abbey road so it's probably a digital cut i don't know but i assume because that's pretty much what they what they do there it's got the lyrics inside here but this is a success you know i haven't really kept up I don't have the la last couple albums from 16 and 15 or whatever years ago. Uh, apparently, this is a, a sculpture, uh, a collectible uh, art piece that uh, Robert Smith has in his collection, and, and he photographed for the cover. It comes with a separate poster of that cover. So, you know, I don't have time or place to put all these posters up, but you leave them. You leave them. Basically, it's the same thing on the cover larger kind of you kind of want to see a picture of of his hair in a poster instead of another picture of this uh, stonework i mean his hair is is wild as hell it's cool as hell he's so iconic in his uh in his uh image is i very iconic but this british band the cure that kind of dark gothy thing going on uh just brilliant love it so five wonderful records again clink the link, <laughs> click, click the link below uh, to get to buy a copy of this. I think it'll be like something like thirty bucks out the door shipped, give or take. I'm not quite sure where you live, 
Um, but let's get a sellout for uh, Sharon and Karen. Or at least go to Bandcamp and listen to it and see what you think. But um, great hooks. It's just a fun record. This is probably the most upbeat record of all these. All these records... Um, well, that's not true. Blackbird's pretty up there with that gospel-y choir stuff. And, and some of the smile is kind of upbeat with these great syncopation drumming things with him and, and Johnny Greenwood's guitar playing. But thank you for watching. A lot of great music out there. So support uh, records, vinyl, or CDs. And uh, enjoy it. Enjoy the music. Stupid. Mazzy loves you.